Oh, how are we doing folks? Welcome back to the channel. Um, something I talk about a lot is detailing and detailing cars uh, specifically. So today I'm gonna to be detailing this. Why does not work? This. That's better. This is a BMW 320D. It's a nice motor and um, it has come in today for uh, detail. Well, the customer states that uh, there is hazing in the paintwork. So I, I can't really get any clips on that because it doesn't really work uh, with the lighting. So what we're gonna do with this today <coughs> is, to be honest with you, a simple machine polish, uh, literally a one-step machine polish to see if that works. Um, but before we do that, we have to decontaminate the whole outside and we're gonna walk and talk through this whole process today. So yeah, welcome back. do that I suppose I better show you the inside of Grand Daughter House and what I have built up over the past two years now I've been building this uh, shed it's still not 100% finished as you can see there's a bit of a mess around the place and um, but this is a functional workspace like as I said this is used for a couple of different things but um, as you can see the difference I've got these uh, hex lighting day and the floor these are both from garagegoals.ie so check out Garage Goals and talk to Keith there I've done a video on it building this whole garage before so I'll go out and check them videos out up here um but what have i done since the last time you have been in here well basically i've done uh, i've got some new shelving in um i've got a compressor in i've got a few other bits and bits and pieces some new tools that you are going to enjoy watching and i've also got just so he's all clear i've also got this brand spanking new kranzel 10 122 ts uh water pump as my power hose so this is what i'm using at the moment so we're going to use this as a little test today as well see how it does this car was booked in anyway but i was actually meant to have a truck in today which uh, is a bit of a disappointment because the weather in Ireland over the next week is going to be a bit brutal so yeah that got uh, postponed pushed out for a couple of weeks but stay tuned for that video that's coming it's a it's a really nice truck as well so yeah what we do here mainly is truck interior uh, detailing which is a big thing uh, it's a big part of my business and um basically i just provide a good service, a good clean um, that's necessary, go into detail without being extortionate in price. I'm not saying other people are extortionate, I'm just saying I'm kind of trying to make sure that everyone gets good value for their money. That's all I'm trying to do. So yeah, uh, this is the interior. Um, we've got a few bits and pieces of tools and stuff like that, but we're going to get the pressure washer hooked up. We're going to start decontaminating the BMW and yeah, we'll just walk and talk through. So let's go. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown of everything I'm using here, right? Um, so this is all just for the, the wash and kind of decontamination stages of the outside of the of the BMW. So in this one here, this is stuff I'm going to, this is rinse aid in here. This is for after you've done all your washing and stuff when you're just about to start drying the car. You put this on last and then rinse it off. There's a rinse aid. And this here is a rubber cleaner or alloy wheel cleaner. Um, I don't specifically use this on any like precious alloy wheel like these ones here are painted and i can see that they're fairly fresh so i'm not going to use this on them but i will use these on the inner arches and i will use them on the tires to clean the rubber because it's a bit more aggressive than uh, iron remover this snuff i'm going here has citrus pre-cleaner in it so that just takes all the crap off the front of it, all the flies it just basically makes it easier to, to wash the, the car so i'm gonna go over the car with this after i use this this is iron remover now this is i know the product bottle here is Kinetech, but uh, in, in this isn't actually Kinetech. I use uh, uh, Red Ox from Reflect Auto Care. Now, this stuff here from Kinetech is okay, um, but it's not as good as the Red Ox from Reflect Auto Care. Sorry, guys, I, I, like, I love you, Spout, but <laughs> I rather the Red Ox. But, um, so with this, I'm going to go over the whole car. I'm going to do all the wheels, going to do the entire body work, cover in uh, iron remover, take all the iron particles off the paint after I uh, citrus pre-cleaned it. Uh, then after that, I will use this stuff here, which is just uh, regular old snow foam. This is pH neutral snow foam. I will go over this and then I will um, clay bar the car with this. Uh, some people think when you're claying that you need specific clay lube. It's just not the case. You can use snow foam. I find it's easier to do a panel at a time, rinse off, and yeah, it just makes everything easier. I'll go over the whole car with citrus pre-cleaner. Um, I'll put it on the car dry. Now, if you're planning on doing this, 
in the sun, I wouldn't recommend. I'd definitely wet the car first because uh, as you can see, it's a fairly overcast day here today and I don't really need to rinse the car off. I'll have the spray it on the whole car, let it sit for a couple of minutes and then rinse. There we go, that's that. Are you sure you're always doing inside the petrol cap? I do a lot of foaming of the car, <laughs> as you can imagine. Back. A lot of door sails up around the boot and uh, under the back side. Most of the, well, 99% of the bugs and stuff like that have been moved off of the front of the, the bumper, which is kind of what we were aiming for. And what I did there as well was I rinsed out all the arches and just blew out the door jams with water um, before I do any washing, because it's just handier to do it now in the early stages of the wash. Um, now there's a good bit to go on the exterior bit. So now I'm gonna uh, basically iron remove everything off the whole car. So I'm gonna do every panel. Uh, I'm gonna do panel by panel usually just cause I want to make sure that this uh, this water kind of dries off at a small bit before I put this on, so it gets uh, a better oxidation or a better, how would you say, a better chemical reaction. That's the one. So we're going to do that. I'm going to straighten the wheels. People are probably going to wonder, is that why are the wheels uh, slightly at an angle, so I can get in because these are really uh, what are they, 19 inch wheels, are they? 20s. I was wondering why there wasn't much room in the arches. It's very hard to blow out the arches with the tip of the with the with tip of the gun. So I just always keep them at a slight angle to blow out all the, the bits you can see anyway and I'll go at the inside of the arches because the inside of these arches are actually carpet up until a certain point and then the, only just the outside bit here is plastic so I'll get them with a brush later on. So yeah, I'm going to iron remove the whole car now. Now I don't know if you can see that perfectly but there's a couple of lumps of tar and stuff on the back that I didn't think this car would have but that's why we go through this process here of just going over the whole car bit by bit and just examining it all. So I'll have to remove all this tar here now off all the arches. There's a good bit on the sides here. So yeah, that's the next mission after I do the iron removal. Oh yeah, by the way, the Kranzel, yeah. So you know you watched me last video when I was cleaning the caddy here. First, I'm gonna start the power hose here, so. Get away out of that because that's very loud. Remember the noise of the petrol washer? Now it's just silence. How are you? So what I was saying there a second ago before uh, Farciana came out and started talking to me was I was talking about the Kranzel pressure washer and how quiet it is like. That's lovely. You can still hear the birds singing. Oh, makes makes this job much more enjoyable. But uh, people are probably going to wonder, what do I think of the cans with pressure washer? Genuinely, um, I love it. I actually do. Uh, the lads in Reflect, when I was buying it, I bought it at Reflect Auto Care, so if you need a crans with pressure washer, hit the lads up. Um, but when I was buying it, the lads were actually kind of worried when I was buying it, because they thought I was going to be disappointed in it. Um, but what I find with the petrol washer that I had, now the one I had was only a cheap one out of Woody's or B&Q or Homebase, whatever, one of those petrol ones with 2000 odd PSI, um, was that I found that the noise was actually fecking with your head a bit, thinking that you had more power than you actually did, but you don't. This has the same, if not more power um, and more flow out of it, but uh, half, no, literally no noise, so it's great. What I'm doing right now, actually, I'm just rinsing off the iron remover that I sprayed all over this side. Um, you can't really see too much of it. Actually, there's only one that you can see on the paintwork. I'll show you here now. See it just here? And so yeah, as I was saying about the Kranzel. Uh, don't worry, I'm gonna clean all these out with a sponge and a brush later on. Um, yeah, the Kranzel, I absolutely adore it. 
and that's not even a word of a lie. I really, really enjoy it. Now, I'm a bit worried to see what my electricity bill is gonna be, but um, I'm not concerned about running down to the, to the petrol station um, when I have three jobs on to buy petrol for the washer, and then it, it might break. This was the biggest problem we had with the, uh, the petrol washers is that they're so unreliable. And I'm brutal at taking care of things. <laughs> I can wash things, I can clean things really well, but I'm very bad at taking care of things. I wouldn't say very bad, but I'm, I wouldn't be the most mechanically minded and I'd be the first one to admit that. Um, so try, I was trying to fix them. The choke was broken on one of them one day. Um, what else went on it? The airflow meter. Then it, it wasn't getting any air through the petrol, so I had to drill a hole in that. Drill a hole through that. Then it just started fucking up with the carb. Oh, it was just they were just they were just a nightmare. Being dead honest. And I don't think I'll ever go back to a petrol washer, a petrol a fuel petrol washer, unless uh, I was doing tractors and stuff like that all the time. But again. Even if I was doing tractors and stuff like that all the time, um, or cars or trucks or whatever, I'd probably still happily use this. It'll probably take me a bit longer to use that, but um, I think I'd be happier. I'd be happier out using that. Because as you can hear, the second I lay off the trigger, it stops. And I, I love that. I absolutely love it. I didn't think I would, but I really do. Yeah, iron remover on the glass. Glass is, uh, glass is key as well. So what I have to do with this now after I do this, I'm gonna have to get the detar out or the tar remover out, go over the two sides, I'll have a look just briefly over the top. Um, yeah, it's feeling a bit smoother already. Um, so why you use iron remover for anyone that doesn't know, basically there can be a layer of stuff on top of your paint before your clay bar, which is like iron particles in the sky. Like, you know, if you live near a building site or anything like that, there's always a lot, a lot of uh, iron particles in the sky because we've got a cutting metal and, um, all that going to carry on and you need to remove the iron from your paintwork before you clay bar and the same with the tar you can take the tar off as well and um, now there is a product that I was looking at testing called Vasco pre-cleaner and um, which is a pre-clean and it removes tar as well so I think I'll be looking into that fairly shortly but yeah so that's the whole back done and I have to rinse this off here now and then detar then after this so yeah, this is going to be fairly repetitive because so I'm going to skip on to <laughs> when we're actually washing the car, right? Right, so as I said, aloe wheel cleaner or rubber cleaner as I like to call it because that's kind of more what I use it for and it's excellent at it. Um, now, as I was going to say, I, I said this in other videos I've done cleaning videos in, this is just the way I do things. I'm not a professional detailer. I call myself more of a cleaner or a valeter. Um, so yeah, this is just the way I do things. If you have an opinion or you think I should do it better, leave a comment below and we'll talk about that. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I don't know if I said this in the last one, but uh, the tire is actually going all brown. So all the ballooning from the tire, all the brake dust that sits actually on the tires itself and the door to muck or anything like that, uh, straight away activates and goes brown. Now this is Reflect Auto Care Aloe Wheel Cleaner. Um, I, I dilute this uh, one part chemical and 10 parts water, so basically means that much water, or that much uh, chemicals and the rest water. Simple, simple way to do things. Make sure you, you dilute this 10 to one at least because it is aggressive. You know, it's, uh, it is quite aggressive like. And this is even in its like most diluted form, it's still aggressive. So just be careful with it. Don't put it on diamond cut alloys. That's that's a fact. So um, so we're here, and I have a brush in my hand. Now, see the ground that I'm cleaning on is 100% not ideal stone, but sure look. Right. Okay. So what we do now is we snow foam up the wheel. I said this in the last clip as well, this is just pH neutral snow foam. And we just... Because the wheel has already been uh, iron removed, no need for any kind of wheel cleaner to be put on it. It's already been uh, decontaminated, so to speak. Now it just needs to be washed. 
and it has been cold rinsed and stuff. So get your get your barrel brush, uh, this microfiber barrel brush, and go in and just have at it bite. Go in and clean all of the barrel as much as you can. See with these wheels, black wheels, they show up everything as well. So if you miss a bit, like you'll see it straight away. So very important that you get in deep into your barrels. Get them a good clean. Now, um, so the package I'm doing on this car, it's not really a package. It's kind of just like a quote I, I came up with. So, so what I'm charging for this, I'll be completely open, which is, and tell you what my price is for this. So this is 200 euro plus the VAT, this job. So it's not a full correction. It's not a whole complete detail on the entire car. It's a, a quick interior detail, um, an exterior decontamination, one stage machine polish, and yeah, that's really it. And I tidy up more than anything else. So the package I like to call it is a good feckin' clean, and this is why I call, call things. Because I don't really do three stage machine polishing because in my opinion in Ireland, I just don't think they're worth it because the weather's so bad here. Um, I don't think there's any point in doing that. In, just, in, just my opinion, because you know, especially this is this car here is like a daily commuter car. They use it all the time. So to be putting whatever it is, seven to eight hundred quid to a thousand euro for a full detail three day job into this car, I just don't see the benefit of it. I think you'd be much better off just doing what I do, a good fucking clean. Now some cars do need a bit more work than this. This car, luckily enough, isn't too bad. It's actually maintained fairly well. The customer looks after this car, um, but it does need just a slight touch up to bring the paint back to life. And it's a good thing that they brought it to me at this time because this car is what, 19, so it's technically four, it's four years old this year. And then we rinse. on the rest of the other wheels. I don't really use the two bucket method, right? I think it's a waste of time. As you can see, the amount of prep that I've put into the car before I actually physically touched the car was pretty immense. So what I do is I have a grit guard in this bucket. I'm gonna put that there just so we get a little bit of sponsorship going on. Um, a bucket, clean water, microfiber mitt, and a grit guard. I just use that to rinse off the mitt. Every, most panels start from the top up and work your way down because after this, I will be clay barring the car. So I just wanna make sure that there's not any heavy contaminants for the clay bar to drag around. So, um, yeah, this is what I do first. So I know people are gonna be like, why are you doing this? Why aren't you using the two bucket method and all? Again, as I said to you earlier on, waste time, absolutely waste time. Why would I bother my arse using two buckets, wasting a load of soap for nothing? The car is covered in soap, <laughs> you know? Going, I'm going in straight lines, keeping it clean. Um, so. That's the first top, top half of the car done. You get a lot of messages from younger folks that are trying to start out valet and then going, oh, what do you need? Basically start out with nothing really. You kind of have to build yourself up to it. And uh, people are like, oh, how do I get into it? How do I get doing this? You kind of have to just learn how to do it and do it for free for a while. You can't, like this, this was not a money making exercise for me in the beginning when I first started doing this. And um, this was just purely out of a hobby and I wanted to get into the car industry the automotive industry and so i started doing car valets for free and um, first it started with my parents car uh, then it progressed to maybe neighbors or family and then i started putting a price on it and then people started paying it now i was probably savagely underpaying myself at the time you know i was charging like 20 or 30 quid for a full valet back in the day but uh that's just what you do you know that's just what you do you have to learn you have to do it for free that's unfortunately that's a lot of, a lot of the case with a lot of things in the automotive industry, you have to do a lot of stuff for free before you get paid for anything. Um, and that's how I started. And I started out with just a garden hose, uh, a bit of car shampoo. That was my dad's that was sitting in the shed for about four years. 
because he never used it. And um, yeah, basically that's how it all started. And now look behind me. This is where it has ended up maybe. I actually came up as a memory on Facebook the other day that I got my first auto gleam. Seriously, the little polish sets that you can get in halfers and stuff. Uh, nine years ago. So I'm 10 years at it before I got anything, anything like this. Now obviously you could have progressed quicker if you wanted to. But as I said to you, I only started this out as a hobby. I never intended it on being my business, you know? But uh, because I enjoy this a lot, um, that's why I started doing it as a business. Now this isn't the main aspect of my business. This isn't everything I do. This is just partly what I do. But I enjoy it. I love it. I still, like, even now I get paid for it. Like, um, all the money I get paid for it, or majority of the money I get paid for these now, literally goes straight back into my business. So I don't really see any much profit, but I see a lot of products and a lot of tools and and a big shed and tile floors and, you know? So that's where you kind of have to start off. Um, you know, think big, start small. So I'm just gonna clay bar the front of this. Now, for clay barring, you don't have to have clay lube. A lot of companies will try and sell you clay lube, it's such a waste of money, don't ever buy it. But um, this clay bar is just, just a plain old Halfords clay bar, nothing, nothing fancy. Um, I was meant to have one of them clay mitts that uh, likes a CMG sells or a Flex sells, but I hadn't time to go and get it this week. So, yeah, it is what it is. So, just give this a little, little rinse with the water. And then you just go at it. Now, ideally, I should really be claying it inside. Some people use quick detail or whatever to clay. Um, I don't. I use snow foam because it's equally as slippy. Um, the paint has just been washed. And plus, when you clay bar and you use, like, just a clay lube or quick detail, or at least a residue on the paint afterwards, and you kind of still have to rinse it and wash it afterwards, which I'd rather do it out here, you know? And as you can see on the ground here, you can hear that. lifting off all sorts of stuff. Now I did detar this car, it's one thing I didn't film because it took ages. <laughs> there was a good bit of tar on this side. There wasn't as much on the other side, but there was a good bit on this side. So um, yeah, the paintwork is still a tiny bit rough. You can hear that it's scratching. Just dump this in the same water that I was cleaning it with. Um, can you hear that? That's all shit on top of your paint. That would have a lot to do with the hazing too. If this car was parked underneath a tree, let's just say, or um, parked in just a dusty yard, that stuff would all be sitting on top of the paint. It gets glued into the paint. So that's me buddy Kev and we clay barred the whole car now. Um, car was then washed again after the clay bar was done and now what he's putting on is the rinse aid now just so we can dry it off. How are you Kevin? Oh, yeah. I'll get you a microphone now in a minute so you can talk. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. but uh, basically what we're doing is we're rinsing off the car with rinse aid. Um, now that the car is covered in rinse aid we rinse it off with water then now in a second and then when that's done then we can start drying it, get it inside and then Begin machine polishing straight away. Kev wasn't here for all the hard bits, don't worry. <laughs> I'll drink the coffee. Make the tea. I'll make the tea. He's the good looking one. Um, so yeah, that's the fucking job. We're gonna, gonna rinse this off here now with water and then get her inside, start drying it off and get machine polishing. So yeah, all the prep work is done. Thank the Lord. <laughs> You can see it, alright?
So what's going on here is that I actually am asking my friend Kev here to do it because Kev is also a detailer on Valor. Kev, what's your page on Instagram called? Kay Valet in detail if anyone else needs anything closer to Dublin side of things. But I'm getting Kev to do it because it's easier to film him doing it. So what he's doing here now, he's going at a low speed with a finishing compound. As you've seen in the last clip, there was a few scratches in the top coat of the paint just where Kev is now. And we're just going to go over it very, very lightly with a, a one step and see if that takes it out because it's only really just sitting in the clear coat. Kev, see those hands that Kev has? Worth a fortune. <laughs> oh yes. Pay some money for them hands. Pay some money for them hands. He's not Digger. cheap, I tell you. Digger hands. Pe Digger hands. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Kev, Kev is actually a train buffer, so I'm gonna just film him doing it. I've done a bit there myself, but it's handier to film him as I was saying. All right, we'll see the. Piece the resistance after a one step. See the result. Look at that. Scratches are completely gone already. Still a couple there at the top. Might need a small cut. Might need a small cut is right. We'll have a look at uh, more attention to that now in a second. We'll look at the difference. Fucking hell. Some difference in that okay. up, yeah. When you see the light bounce off it, it's unreal, isn't it? <laughs> Too much detail, just kind of give them a little spruce. Give me five inches. Everyone's probably gonna be like, Where's your three inch polish on me? If what I was thinking, that's a good bit better, isn't it? Better than what I was. Yeah, the roof is a bit hazy, isn't it? Yeah. But the, all the panels were all the same, really, the whole way around. Like, the bonnet was really hazy. And that came out lovely. Yeah. So, uh, the car has been completely machine polished now, thanks to 70% of it was because of Kev there. Um, but it's done now, so what we do now, so I don't know if you can hear it, but the paint is actually pretty dry, it's pretty crispy. Um, and that happens all the time after they get machine polished, they're a bit dry and susceptible to paint. So that's why it's like literally vital that you see your paint work. So this is what we're using, a bit of Sonax uh, Polymer Net Shield. And literally all you do is you foam up, spray a little bit onto the panel now. I should be wearing gloves, Kev's going to eat me for this now. But you spray it onto your applicator now, I just use a microfiber because I've no applicators left. And just go up and down. You can see it's kind of hazy looking. But that's all right. We don't mind that. We don't mind that at all. Just go over. See. You clean it. I'm doing it side to side here. You don't really have to do that. But um, you basically do it the way you want the water to be. And usually up and down is the way forward. I'm just going to do it this way so you'll see it. Uh, after we wash the car, the way the car beads on this side. And then, once it's in there, you get a fresh cleaner cloth, dry, 
a nebo fast. The proof is in the pudding. And that's it completely sealed now. It's still a bit dry to touch, but uh, you can build it up with quick detail or wax, polish, anything you want. So I just usually put that on it and then a little quick detail on the top. Unless you're getting a ceramic coat, you can put a ceramic coat on top of that later. But no necessary. Now we'll push this away for a moment. So now the entire of the car has been now sealed. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on the interior now. Kev is now gone, uh, Kev had to go to work, but Kev gave me a big hand uh, filming this today, so I'd like to give a big shout out to Kev O'Reilly, and I'm going to leave his Instagram here, please go give him a follow, he's a lovely fella. Um, so what we're going to do here now is, before I bring it outside for an exterior wash, which is, I always do that after a detail anyway, because there's be tiny bits of polish in the jams of the doors and stuff like that, which is uh, not exactly ideal when you're handing it to a customer. So what I'm going to do is, Clean out the interior. Luckily enough, the interior, and this is usually, it's actually pretty clean, to be honest. Just needs to dust out, like, so the likes of uh, the floor mats here need a good dusting. And how, I'm going to show you how to put stripes in them, how to make them nice and shiny and clean looking. And then I'm just going to, yeah, just walk through the interior a bit. Um, and then once we have the interior done, I'm going to put the windows up, bring it outside. A quick uh, rinse, uh, we do a small contact wash, and then dry it off, and then... Away we go, so let's get stuck into the interior. First things first, what we do with the interior is rip out the floor mats. So floor mats are all outside here now. And now this is, uh, this is me new tool that I haven't shown just yet. So I got, as I don't know if you can see in the shot there, but I've got a 100 litre compressor, uh, a three horsepower 100 litre compressor, and I have this bad boy. So this is called a tornado. Now, if you don't know what this is, basically there's a little nozzle in the top of it, and this spins around and blows dust out. Um, it's a really, really, really handy tool, to be honest with you, it's a game changer. Now you might hear when I start filming that this is hissing a bit. The seal in my airline is a bit, bit bogey, so I have to get that fixed. Um, but yeah, this is an absolute game changer. And this little compartment down here, Star's interior cleaner, so if you're doing the likes of vents, blowing out dust and vents and stuff like that, oh, this just makes your life so much easier. Now this is an expensive bit of kit, as is the compressor, so I'm not gonna say to you younger guys, go out and buy this straight away, because like this is this is getting into big boys toys here. And also, this machine here, you would have seen this in other videos as well. This is my triple motor extractor. Um, so this is a wet and dry vac, so I can use this for both, and um, it's triple motor, so it's extremely, extremely powerful. That's about 800 quid worth of a hilver right there. And this is, I don't know how much this is, three or 400 quid. I bought these second hand off uh, a guy I know. So yeah, so between this, the compressor, the air guns, and all my other wizardy tricks, um, the interior will be back to brand new. So let's get stuck into that. So with these carpets here now, they're pretty clean. Um, so what I'm gonna do is gonna give them a quick going over with the drill brush. See this, absolute essentials these drill brushes are. They're like five quid on Wish, don't buy them out of a detailing shop, literally five quid. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow over all of them with this. Um, give each one of them a quick hoover, and then I might spray a bit of shampoo on them. I might wet factor them just a small bit just to get the dirt out of them, because that one, the driver's seat one especially, is a bit dirty. And then once I wet factor them, then I'm gonna put the stripes in them. Let's forgive me for this, because this is gonna be a bit noisy, right? But basically what we do here is, so we'll do the, we'll do the passenger seat here first, the passenger seat mat. Um, and what we're gonna do with this, so you can see, as you can see, it's a bit dirty as well. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, let me just check. So you can see in this mat here, it's a tiny bit brown in places, uh, especially down here in the middle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this drill head. Oh, we're gonna change this drill head to a blue, 
round drill head, this lad here. Um, so that's good to go. And we change the head on the extractor to what's in air and one that's in water. Now a lot of detailers would have um, one of these that would shoot out water, but uh, if you go light enough on your chemicals, you won't even need water at all. So which chemicals shall I be using? So this stuff here, it's called Boyo Blue, also from Reflect. I get a lot of stuff from Reflect, as you, <laughs> as you can see, because uh, the value for money is pretty big. So I'm just gonna just double check so you can see that there. So basically, sp spray our product all over the mat. Get a good bit on it now, don't be afraid to spray it on. Now this is diluted 10 to one, especially here. 10 to one, so one part chemical, 10 parts water. Don't be afraid to use a good bit of it now. Because you need it to actually be basically wet to do this. Sometimes I have a pump sprayer for doing this, but just for purposes of the video. Then ah. it. Grab it. Grab it up. So you can see the soap's kind of activating there now, but I just need a tiny bit more on it. Some people, what they do with their mats, usually what I would do, these mats are fairly clean, is that I'd bring them outside and I'd power hose them off first, but these mats are actually not bad, they're just really dusty. getting sucked up here. Yeah, it's not really that it's dirty, it's more dust. You see the way it's black? That's more dust than anything else. As you can see, nice and clean, stains are gone. Just needs a couple of minutes to dry out and I'll be back to brand new. So I'm gonna repeat that process over the next four mats and then I'll show you how to put the stripes in them. Right, so I'm gonna try something a bit different here. So that's the driver's side mat, so that goes in that way. So this will be going in this way. So you start from the bottom, cross over, cross over, cross over. Oh, I made a mess that one. It's very easy to make mistakes with this, but it doesn't really matter. This is just the finishing touches. If you're a pro, this is what you do. And this, this stuff, believe it or not, it does matter because people love to see it. When people are spending a few bob with you to get your car, their car done, Especially if you're like myself and you're a bit of a detailer and you're not really like a... And as I said, I'm not a detailer, I'm more of a valor, but I like, I go into detail. I just, with the detail side of things, I just hate three-stage machine polishing. You know, I just hate, I just think it's absolutely useless in this country. But there, there you go. They look a bit wavy now.
done. Only about eight hours later. But um, in fairness to this car, it actually wasn't even that bad to be honest to begin with. It just really needed that one step up just to bring the paint back to life. As you can see, the gloss and all has been restored. And now it's ready to hand back to the customer. So lads, if you like this video, please hit a like, please subscribe, please follow us on all social medias and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck.